and have Hello, it's 708. I'm Freddie Gillespie, Chair of the Open Space Preservation Commission. We have a quorum, so I'm calling the meeting to order. And the first thing I'd like to do is um, introduce our newer members. Tonight we have Leslie, who was at our prior meeting, I believe. And for the first time, um, we have CJ Tully. So welcome. I mean, um, Sarah Rossitano is a long-term member, and I'm Freddie, the chair in the red hat. But I'm not a red hat lady. Um, I'm looking for the agenda to take the minute, sorry. Oh, do you want me to email you one? It Was it not emailed? I'm not sure. Um, I may not have. So I, okay, just. I'll give it to you because then it will be in Word. Okay. I just sent that along. Let me know if you get it. Did everyone get that? No? Um, do you know how to put it on the screen to share your screen, Sarah, when you get it? Can you do that so everyone can see it? So the first thing, once she gets settled, we're going to go over the minutes. Um, we have some old minutes that from June and probably neither Leslie nor CJ were here at that meeting. I sent them out to you so you can review them and we'll vote on them. And if you wanna recuse yourself, you can or abstain. And then the December one, Leslie, you were here for that one, I believe, right? So did it come through yet, Sarah? So, let me find the right one. The right minute agenda? Yeah. Well, while you're looking for that, I can just give this overview. Is that all right? Yeah. For CJ and for Leslie, a review. So the official charge of the Open Space Preservation Commission is to facilitate the preservation of open space. And we do that in many ways because we found that as land prices got more expensive and scarcer, there were still things we could do that preserve open space in non-traditional buy the land or protect it with a conservation restriction or through subdivision process. So one of the things we're looking at is through natural resource protection, which is a way of preserving open space, even if it's not protected. And we started working on a pollinator native plant initiative um, many years ago. But in 2015, we started working with Professor Robert G. Gear from U of Mass. And he has provided research. Sulfur was his first research site. And his research that he's done plus our citizen science has created a plant list and we are promoting that throughout town because we have seen firsthand that it's helping to save species from extinction which is wildlife habitat preservation is one of the goals of preserving open space there's many goals to preserve it you know clean air clean water you know parks um and other things. So this is a bigger conversation than just for tonight, but it um, it sort of will help um, just a quick overview of that gives you an idea of why we're going to be talking about pollinators and plants so much. Is that okay for everyone? 
Leslie, I know you're aware of it because you've been volunteering with us. It might, is this all new info to you, CJ? No, you uh, you mentioned this to me when um, when I was coming on. All right, it was a while ago, so yeah, forgive me if I, I'm a little rusty. Um, so for the minutes, I think the first one we sent out was the... Do you wanna do the one from this? Uh... I think it was from June. Yeah, should I pull those up? Yeah, why don't you do that? Okay, do you see them? I do. Okay. So this is going back to June. June 22nd. Yeah. Can you scroll up just a little bit? I think I oh. had one. That's the top. Scroll down then. Oh. Um, keep going. Maybe it wasn't this one, but um, Dawn Vesey of the Mass Butterfly Club. I think it's V-E-S-S-E-Y. And this is spelled wrong. Greg Chagir. G. Yeah. Uh, is that spelled right now or? Dr. Chagir, yes. It was just, okay. Um, and then after Dawn Vesey Beasy, um, it's yep. diversity of butterfly species, maybe just end it with that. Okay. Does anyone else have any, it would just be you, Sarah, I think, cause you were there. Nope. Okay. Do you want to make a motion? Um, I will make a motion to accept the amended minutes from June 22nd. And is there a second? I'll second that. I'll do a roll call if you're in favor. Sarah? Sarah Rossitano in favor. CJ? DJ Tully in favor. Leslie? Yes, in favor. And Freddie's in favor. So that passes unanimously. And then we can do the December minutes. Can we pull them up?
Can you see them? I see them. Me too. Was there a second page? All right, are there any amendments? Edits, not amendments, but edits. I'm all set. I don't. Is there a motion then? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from December 28th to 2022. Is there a second? Anyone can second, I guess. Second, let's see, I'll second. So Leslie seconds. All in favor, I'll call Sarah. Sarah Rossitano in favor. CJ. CJ Tully in favor. Leslie. Leslie in favor. And Freddie's in favor. Okay, that ends the minutes. Um, back to the um, overview of our current projects. I already did the charge while we were waiting for the minutes to come up. Um, we have a, we just are finishing up our winter sow project. And I just want to let you know how successful that was. Um, Leslie, you attended the workshop. Do you want to give an update of what you felt about or how you felt that went? You're on mute though. Yeah, it was a, a good turnout and um, I thought it went really well. Um, you know, demonstrations and where if somebody wasn't sure about how to do something, there was somebody there who did and, and uh, everybody uh, seemed really happy with, you know, with their, their planting. And uh, there was a couple folks that came late and they were still able to, uh, make a couple of jugs. So um, and people got to talk about, um, about garden, gardening, about native plants. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a great uh, experience. So workshop. For anyone who may be watching or doesn't know, this is the Open Space Preservation Commission has been working on. We collected seeds, all native seeds for from Dr. G. Gear's list for at-risk pollinators. And we, over the course of many weeks with a vast crew of volunteers, uh, we cleaned them and then we packaged them. We took orders and we distributed over 1500 packets of seeds for free. Um, it was a pretty massive undertaking. As a matter of fact, it still goes on because someone just gave me some new seeds that are new on Dr. T. Gear's list that we're going to be able to get some growing. Um, but and then we had the workshop where we showed people how to make the jugs and plant the seeds. So um, that went well. As Leslie said, it was it was really actually a lot of fun too. So good work, good Absolutely. fun. Absolutely. So um, we did that and. That continues on. Some of those jugs, people planted extra. They'll be giving them back to us so that we can plant them in gardens in town to help further um, having what we call the pollinator preservation gardens. We have one at uh, the Beals Preserve, the South Broken Land Foundation we partner with. And there's one at the library. We partner with the library. And then there's um, multiple plantings at Breakneck Hill. And that we call the Becology Research Garden and Meadows. So um, that's ongoing. The um, are all of those gardens part of uh, the Southboro Open Space? Yes, we take the lead on it. It's getting these um, display gardens for people to see, so they can get the plants at home. Right, so people won't plant plants. They don't know what they look like. These flowers are not traditionally available in nurseries. So that's part of what we're making them available. Uh, Dr. G. Gear, and we'll 
hopefully we'll get a presentation from him soon. He has um, new data on butterflies from the last two years of his grad students at Breakneck Hill. And he has, you know, research data that supports where we put these plants in at-risk bees we knew from prior years, but now we know the at-risk butterflies are there too. And we say at risk, that means species whose populations are declining over historical. He compares historical numbers to current numbers. And ones that are drastically declining um, are the ones that we plant for. Because many of the plants, you can plant native plants, which are all important, but many of them are feeding species that aren't in trouble. And if you want to help save species from extinction and you want to help biodiversity overall, taking care of the ones that are in trouble is the most important to do. So that's what this is. We partner with other groups so people can see the plants and then maybe get these plants um, in their own yards so that we can start, start to turn the tide around. So then the other one is um, kind of just covered the pollinator preservation gardens. So even though they're not on town property, all of them, the fields preserved, we partnered with them, right? To help get this out there, which is the South Broken Land Foundation for the fields preserved. I put another item here. I sent you out a registration. If anyone is interested in attending the Land Trust Conference, it's a annual conference where um, when I first got on the open space and didn't know a lot, where we gained much knowledge. And if anyone is interested in that, it's a it's a commitment. It's a whole, like it's an all day Saturday with lots of workshops. Um, we can fund that out of our budget. And I just sent it out. So I know it's kind of last minute. I think it's in March sometime. If any interest from anyone or yeah, I would be interested. I don't know that I'll be be off, uh, or if I'll if I have enough time to put in for the time off. What date is it again? I think I sent it out to Ray in an email. Um, yeah, I have the schedule up. Saturday, March twenty fifth. So there's still time to register and think about it. There's also there's a, so that's from the land trust coalition, which is for land trust, not municipal open space commissions. There's a bit of a difference in, you know, municipalities and nonprofits. So um, the information is great, but some of it's a little bit different. And there's in the last few years, a open space committee commission network has started up for state municipal organizations and they have workshops and some grants. And I just think I saw one, I was a little behind on this, but one coming up and those ones are free. And I think there's one this week on the biomap and the biomap is something the state uses to help guide people in what are the most important properties to protect based on biodiversity, rare species, um, and so that's, I think, the workshop this week, maybe Thursday. It's an hour long. I'll send that out. You can just sign up if you're interested in free. Um, so the next things are oh, somehow I skipped Planet Palooza. This was what we did last year for celebrating Earth Day. And the question is, are there things we want to do for it? And what we did is we created it to be an umbrella. Like in the past, all the town had was a roadside cleanup. And then conservation, Melissa, um, started a poster contest for kids and schools. And then last year when we did this, we we 
got lots of different groups to do nature walks or, you know, different activities to be within this week long celebration of Earth Day. And we just sort of had our, we had our own events, talks at the library. I think we had Dr. Jagir give a talk, but we created an umbrella for all these and went around to all these different groups to say, do you want to do something this week? And, you know, what would you like to do? And tried to keep different activities from uh, being, um, what do you, what I said, conflicting times and schedules. So if there's any ideas you have on what you'd like to do, one thing we had wanted to do last year and it got canceled and I'd like to bring it back was there's a artist that the stewardship committee is working with and she turns out to be a guitar singer, um, songwriter, and she has an Earth Day concert that she could sing for us at the library grounds right next to the pollinator garden. That was what we wanted to do get people there, have her sing a few songs and, you know, make it sort of a little celebration. And if the committee wants to follow up on that, you know, we can follow up and or other ideas. And you Anything? have her name, the contact. Claire, Claire. Um, I can send it out after this meeting and then with some, some samples of her songs, maybe she's doing a, map of the trails at Breakneck Hill for us is how we found her for the stewardship committee. So it's going to be an RD map instead of just, you know, it's going to have an interpretive um, segment to it, but she turns out to be a singer also. Um, I'm just putting that out there. That's in April. So if that's something people are interested in, I can pursue sending you out that info. Yeah, I'd be interested in that. CJ, does that? Yeah, yeah, me as well. Okay, and Sarah? Yes, I think it's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, we had decided to do it last year and it something got complicated and we didn't. And it ties into our pollinator garden. And, um, Is Planet Palooza going on anyway? And we're partaking in a couple of different ways, or are we generating Planet Palooza from this group? We're generating it. Okay. And we did it last year and we decided to make it annual. Okay. Unless, of course, this committee can decide they don't want to. The goal is not for us to run all the programming, but to right now go out and invite like the South Broken Land Foundation, the Trails Committee. Most of them are doing things anyhow, but sort of to create the calendar and help publicize it uh -huh. and encourage people to do things. And doing it on Earth Day? Not exactly because Earth Day, we do it for a week because, it, you know, we could have a talk at the library. We don't want right, conflicting right, right. things and different times. So we see what the other groups want to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Any thoughts on that? Anything you'd like to see happen? You're muted again, Leslie. I can't think of anything right now, but, um, you know, give me a few minutes. I didn't attend. Uh, the previous Planet Palooza, but we'll meet again and have a chance to talk about it further, right? I mean, we don't have to come up with the, all, all the ideas right now. I mean, even if I just meet with you and it's not a whole town meeting or, you know, maybe we can text or something, some way to. Yeah, we just try not to, ideas. we have to be careful about open meeting law, but. Oh. So this is February. When is twenty uh, first? Um, everything starts months. to come up fast, you know. Yeah, yeah, it does. Earth Day is. I'd be interested. It's to Saturday, hear. April twenty second on my. 
phone. It's usually the 22nd. Yeah. So that's, that's, it's one of those holiday, oh, not holidays, but events that happens no matter what day of the week it falls on. But the Earth Day cleanup, and we never want to interfere with a long-standing Rotary Club cleanup. So we would first coordinate with them on the concert, like maybe have it after their event or before the time, you know, when they do, you don't want people to not do the cleanup because they're coming to our, our concert thing. Good point. But um, is that? Do you know what day the cleanup is? That, is that they, actually- They do the theirs on a Saturday. They do it on a Saturday, okay. So I'm assuming it will be on the 22nd. That gives us two months, but I think if we're going to do it at the library, I need to let the library know we're going to have a concert there. Um, sing along like we did last time. And I haven't given you enough information. So can I do a tentative one for them and then get more information and hopefully we can meet again soon? That yeah. work, Leslie? Yeah, I'm also, I see the uh, posting for it last year on southboroughtown.com and has PDF with the information for all the events. So I think that'd be helpful for us to, to take a look at offline. I can send everyone the link. Yeah, I think it's that on our webpage. Mm -hmm. The... Sarah, can you pull that up? The web page with can, all the uh, panic blues. I screen, I think. Uh, Does he need permission to share? Can you give him permission? I don't know. Here we go. Aha. Called it a three week one. It looks like the poster contest ran for a few weeks. That's probably the only why, reason why, but the rest are between 420 and 4. So, what happened here is um, Melissa at ConCom ran the um, Con, you know, the earth, the poster contest, and you wanted to have it a few weeks and then have a winner. And in the past, I think the winning or the entries were showcased at the library. I don't know how that would work this year. You know, COVID for a few years changed a lot of things. So this was the woman I um, Claire Daisy. Mm -hmm. Is this the singer songwriter? Uh huh. Oh, nice. Did you want to, if you want to Google and go to her website, we could hear what she sounds like. Do you want to do that? Well, CJ, you I don't know. Your screen. Can you do that? I don't I mind can... doing it offline, you know, in my own time, if if you don't want to take meeting time to do it. I, uh, I don't think I can share audio through through this. Okay. Um, yeah. But she was, she was quite um, pleasant to listen to and, and, she had an actual Earth Day special song concert she has written. Um, so Should we can contact see- contact her again? Huh? Uh, who, who's gonna contact her? I'm in touch with her for the stewardship thing. So I can- Oh, okay, great. It. I just realized time got away. The, the winter so thing really got a little bit overwhelmingly busy. Um, yeah. So, I'm thinking if we're going to do it at the library, he's they're going to want to know now rather than later. Because it's right. only two months away. Is that something I can move forward with? I think it's a good yeah. idea. Yeah. Good idea? Yeah. All right. Sarah, you're okay with it? I know it's from last year. So yeah. All right. And these other events are pretty much um, other other groups planned them right the, the stewardship the trails committee um the well we had a couple of talks and 
the Earth Day concert and the Garden Talk and Tour were the same day, and that was what got canceled. And we wanted to reschedule it, but the uh, the Garden Talk and Tour got rescheduled, but not the concert. So we'll move forward on that. This is wonderful. Okay. So I think that takes care of that section of Planet Palooza. Um, do you want me to send out an email to all those groups and see, you know, if they want to participate again? So yeah, I think that, yeah. Okay. I mean, let me know if you want help too. I'll reach okay. out. Okay, you can help me. Okay. <laughs> I don't care if doesn't break violation of open meeting law. Um, back to the agenda. And if anyone in the group in this commission has an idea of something they'd like us to do, you know, you can think about it and come up with it. I'm trying to find my um, agenda again. I have it in my photos. Okay, so I sent you out a link to the master plan and the open space and recreation plan. And for just, I don't know if you had a chance to look at it. What I think we need to do is, there's many boards and committees and entities throughout town that are involved in these plans and have requirements. And we actually have been working on projects that satisfy a lot of these requirements, but we don't have a laid out plan with an itemized list of everything that um, are identified as under our jurisdiction. So maybe I'm thinking I'm gonna to try to get a hold of a spreadsheet or if somebody here knows how to make one from those documents with just our, with just our, um, identified responsibilities, and then we could make a plan of how we want to address that. A couple of them are really big, and some of them are more ongoing, and different projects will fit into it. There's a lot of education, but for open space land protection, there's a pretty heavy lift on some of those items, as well as the invasive species um, criteria. And that might mean going for a grant to get someone else to help us do it, because certainly an unstaffed all volunteer commission can't do everything that's identified there. I can take care of that, Freddie. Making the list? Yeah, pulling everything together into a, a spreadsheet and helping us build a plan around it. Okay, that would be wonderful. And then we can all look at it and see, um, think about how we want to move forward on it in the future. Yep, and just to confirm, that's in that's between both the uh, the master plan and two things, right? Master plan and the open space and recreation plan, correct? Right. There, the master plan is a ten year plan, and it just came out. And the open space and rec plan is a seven year plan, and we're halfway through it and haven't really um, formally identified our actions, although we're familiar with things, so we stuff we're doing counts, but there's some gaps I don't want us to miss. And a lot of these are goals. So, you know, we do the best we can with the resources we have, which aren't plentiful. But we did ask for more funding this year, so we could hope to um, do better. Uh, I think we had been at 3,000 a year, no, 2,000 a year for all the programs and work we do, which is, you know, pretty incredible that we get as much done as we have. And we asked for 5,000 for this year, hoping it would allow us to do more programming, particularly on some of the invasive species and outreach and education components. Um, we just can't do everything for free anymore. Yeah, okay, I can take care of that. That'd be great. Um, so unless somebody here who has gone through it all 
and I might talk about it later, but um, line items might come up, but unless you wanna go through it from just getting them sent to you recently, we can move on and take it up next time. What was it that you sent out the 10 year plan? The town's master plan in the same email. And it also had a link to the open space and recreation plan. I'm sorry, I missed the first word. Open the master plan. I got the second one. What was the first one? Open the open space, space and recreation. Uh, okay, I got that. I feel like I'm missing something. There's like two documents, right? Yep. I got the open space and rec plan. What's yep. the other one? A master plan for the town. Okay, for the town. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I think they're best reviewed offline, just given how dense they are based on what I kind of flipped through earlier today. Yeah, you can't. So what I'm thinking is having a spreadsheet, we can look at it, but you can look at them. I sent you the pages that they our items start on. It's a, you know, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean don't read the rest of it that gives you the background and everything, but it's a, you know, it's a pretty heavy. And we had a representative who sat on the master plan for three years and we reviewed it and reviewed not just our components, but other components throughout those three years. So it was a, a massive undertaking that um, the master plan committee undertook. And we were active participants in that. Um, so the next item I have is updates and discussions. If you're okay to move on from that, no more. Okay. So I don't know. Um, who's been following along, but there's a St. Mark Street Park working group. This is a park that is being created after the um, relocation, the proposed relocation of St. Mark's Road. And there's been a lot of controversy. There's a committee that was set up to create um, a plan for the park that's going to be created if the town accepts of the road relocation. It's a land swap with St. Mark's School. And I had been appointed to that um, committee. I was the voted by this commission to be the representative, but I needed to um, step down and resign from that. So although I'm not on the committee any longer, there's still a role for this commission to weigh in on it because originally it was, um, we actually sent a support letter for the town to the state to get the grant before it got as controversial. It was originally planned to be a pollinator habitat garden, as well as a historical walk. So we still wanna make sure that the pollinator um, benefit is there. Although early on we decided that the plan for Matt was extensive flower gardens, wasn't necessarily a good plan for that parcel for public land. We don't have a, you know, we don't have the means to manage it to, um, so we were looking at more using the trees and shrubs on Dr. G. Gear's list, plus, Um, alternative lawn areas where lawn isn't specifically needed and then um, working on that. So that's something I think the commission should still weigh in on. We, um, in discussion with that, we, let me see where it is. Yeah, we were we were very involved in expanding what we had started at the library because it um, the park was going to be directly next to what we had already started with our preservation garden at the library. 
And I remember discussing kind of tying it in, um, not only as a town park, but to extend our efforts in the native, um, the, all the native um, efforts that we're doing in the pollination preservation gardens. We even had drawings and um, we had we had a couple different designs that we went over, but now everything's changed. Um, but I still think we should go for the same goal. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Uh, one of the points is for the pollinator preservation, you need something in bloom all season long from early mm -hmm. spring through fall. And you need both for the bees, you need both nectar and pollen. There's some concern about bees are gonna be out there stinging people. You know, the native bumblebees and bees that we plant for are not out there stinging people. That's the honeybees and the wasp and the yellow jackets. And um, as I've told many people, I used to be very afraid of bees and and I've just been working with them now for nine years and I've never never been stung. And I, you know, I'm right up close and personal and none of our other volunteers have been either. So just, um, you know, you don't grab one and squeeze it. But aside from that, um, I have seen ones that are so pretty, I wanted to reach out and pet them because right. um, it was so incredible to see th this was the uh, queen bee for the most endangered at risk bumblebee bombus fervidus. And, um, you know, it was so exciting to see it up close because we've been sort of like the holy grail, we've been looking for it for so right. long and then we planted for it and here it is. Um, this is at breakneck, but, uh, so one of the things was we were looking for the trees and shrubs instead of that do flower, but provide the, especially the re, um, really important pollen early season to be a component of the planting there. And I had, when I was on the committee, I'd come up with a design for the, um, built on the historical um, or some designs from, uh, people from the historical society for their historical walk that would incorporate the native plants from Dr. G. Gear's list into that garden design. And I'd still like us to make those recommendations because uh, first of all, the, guard, the park has to go before the planning board for site plan review. And per our town zoning code, the, um, and the special permits, they're going to need to make it native plants. And so why wouldn't we make it the best native plants that we have nine years experience showing has the best benefit for the reason why we plant native plants, which is right. to prevent species from heading to extinction. And it's not just the, the pollinators, it goes all the way up, you know, first stop is the pollinators, but then the birds and then on all the way up the, um, the hotropic levels. So unfortunately, we're kind of time running out. I'd like to send that plan out to you after this meeting and the recommendations and they're all from Dr. Dubuque's plant list. That's what we had agreed on before. Um, there needs to be a rain garden because there's a wet area there. And uh, um, those are the only areas for flowers as much. But the shrubs, you know, one of the things we had proposed, I proposed when I was a member of the committee, there was a lot of concern about the park being close to a busy street and creating a buffer around the edge of the park with low growing shrubs made sense because we don't want to block it off from view, but you don't want the ability of, you know, a kid running out into the street or the sidewalk. And then um, I'd also met with uh, Jim Hegarty, our town clerk who had attended a meeting and had great concern about children's safety. And he had made a recommendation for a type of fencing, not a fence fence, but more like, you know, like those old fashioned wrought iron poles that have a, um, a chain or a rope connecting them. 
just something to slow down a child from running. And I think the shrubs will do it, but that gave him extra confidence. And, you know, people will walk through a shrub or something might not do well. So it adds that second layer. And he'd also suggested a um, some sort of self-closing gate at the gateways because there's a lot of concern on the busy street. I don't know how the committee will deal with that. And that's not really our commission's concern, but that was part of the component of what I had presented because um, you know he'd been at the meeting, I was on the committee and he was concerned and I met with him to get his ideas. And you know, I think for right. us- But it's not a playground. Well, it's not a playground, but the, the concern was the library may want to use it for having story hours because they think the area they're currently using is too sunny. Right. So be what it may, children will be there. And, um, you know, I kind of, I was just at a park in Worcester, you know, a very busy street and, you know, it was open to the sidewalk and in a city, it didn't seem to be a concern, but maybe coming from a more rural community, people are more, you know, and I certainly, anyhow, the fencing and all of that, it's off my, um, radar because I'm not on the committee right. anymore and it's not our the commission's job no. but I think the shrubbery um, and not just one solid shrub all the way around there's a big perimeter there and if you had you know a section of multiple shrubs you could really cover a lot of the right. um, timeline have I sent out Dr. G Gears list to you all Maybe not. Well, I've had it, but I don't think I've seen you send it to them. Uh, would you so, make a note to send it to me? I'll send it to the whole commission. Um, we have been actively working with Dr. DeGear on this. And what's really exciting now is, you know, based on our involvement with him, keeping uh, his research alive and well in Southboro, there's new plants coming out in 2023 for butterflies, which um, the original focus had been on bumblebees. So, you know, that's kind of fun. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'll send that list out and I'll send you the list of the recommended uh, trees and shrubs I had sent to the committee along with the plan. And the plan was just me tracing over somebody else's plan and then <coughs> using colored pencils to draw in. I'm not an artist and I'm not a graphic designer, but you know, it showed what it showed, what needed to be shown. So I'll send that out for our next meeting. Um, do you, does that sound like a path forward to make that recommendation? It yes. also is, um, if you go through the master plan, you'll see where in numerous items we are asked to do things with getting these native plants installed townwide, getting it part of our um, planning board and conservation commission recommendations to educate the public. Having a park where the plants are there gives us the opportunity to educate. It's one of the big things we're charged with doing. Anything else on that from anyone? No. Okay. So the we had an application in Community Preservation Committee to review an extension of the pollinator preservation garden at the library. There's a wooded area. It's not much, but it's between a grassy area and the old burial ground. And it's between where the pollinator, have you seen the pollinator preservation garden, CJ, at the library? Yep. So there's an area between that. And then if you go towards where it's all dug up, which is the new park area, there's a part of the library that's been um, neglected for many years. It's, there's trees and there's a lot of invasive shrubs. There's some trees that are dead and dying there's uh big limbs hanging down that you know could impale someone standing under it 
So our goal was to um, add the plants that were missing for shrubs, clean out the invasives, plant some shrubs in there. And also it's been the area where for whatever reason, the landscapers of the town have blown all the leaves from the cemetery and the library. So in the fall, it can be like shoulder high with leaves that up against the trees that are in there um, is not a good landscape practice. It, it helps bring in disease and rot. So we wanted to clean that out and then make it um, put some better shrubs in for where the invasives are. However, there was a lot of controversy over the St. Mark's Park. And we voted as a committee to ask the CPC and they agreed for us to hold it off. This was a, a plan for last um, town, annual town meeting. We held it off. We were gonna go to the special town meeting. We thought it would just get you know, too involved with the controversy over the the park because it would be seen as part of the same project and it's separate. So we were going to come forth to this annual town meeting and with the continuation of the St. Mark's Park and the St. Mark's Road, we had previously um, talked about withholding and I didn't put the application in. We didn't have a meeting in time to make that decision, but I just didn't I didn't um, submit it. And we can come back if there's a fall town meeting, so decide. But it just didn't seem, um, it just seemed to be too much in that small area with all the other, we don't want that project to be voted down because people don't like the St. Mark's Park, if that makes sense. Strategically, it made sense. So um, I don't think we lose much by waiting. Lots to gain, potentially. So that's um, that's off the table. Chestnut Hill Farm update. This is an ongoing project. I'm sorry. This is. I'm hoping once Leslie and and CJ get on board more that you will adopt and have your own projects to be sharing with the committee. Commission. Um, Chestnut Hill Farm. This commission played a large role in getting the town to purchase a conservation restriction. The town holds the CR and we paid almost $5 million for it um, or over five. And the trustees of reservation own the land and they manage it, but they still have to manage it in compliance with what's in the conservation restriction. And this commission has a role in reviewing um, when they come for their, their five year annual, it's not annual, it's, uh, every five years they need to update their management plan. And about a year ago, we sent in comment letters. We had some concerns over some of the things that didn't seem to be quite what was required in the CR. And that still hasn't been finalized. So that's why it's here. One of the big concerns was the farm management in the area of bobolink habitat. One of the components of the conservation restriction was to protect the wildlife habitat and they get to farm, but the bobolink hab nesting habitat has certain requirements. And there's been some concerns on how the farming has negatively impacted that. So that an area that was one of the largest bobolink nesting area in the town for the last, I don't think there were any nesting last year. And we've, or we've had reports that there weren't any, and there's concerns that there won't be any this year again. So you have to manage when you mow or when you graze. So that's something we're keeping our eye on as well as their farming management. Um, planning board open space review is the next item. So subdivisions throughout the town had open space requirements. And one of the ways they did it was they would set aside um, Sometimes we got a chunk of land, but more often it was a, um, a technique that we find hasn't worked so well in practice. So maybe the original intent was to keep, you know, large swaths of land from being clear cut from one subdivision to the next. But it has these narrow buffers at the back of property. 
and they're privately owned. There's a um, easement or something in the deeds. And that's one type. Other types are, um, like I said, large parcels that came to the town. So the planning board started a project where every year they pick different subdivisions to look at and they hire a consultant to go out and see the condition of the open space. And what we find over and over again is those small um, slivers don't buffer, don't work so well. But um, that's something that's an annual thing. And the town planner reaches out to us to see a list of what she's going to recommend. Um, they go out and look at, and we're invited to go along if we want, or to say, yeah, that's a good one to look at or not. We're not really doing any inspections, but they they do them. Is that something anyone's interested in um, sort of working with the town planner? I can help until you know what the subdivisions are. Maybe we can all I'm, look at the list before she approves it so you can get an idea of what it is. I might be. I have to learn more about it. Yeah, I only went I think I've only been on one inspection. I mean, the Open Space Commission in the past would inspect them as the subdivisions came through or the road acceptances. Um, but project, it was the first attempt, and I'm proud of the planning board for undertaking it. Um, but it was the first attempt to um, really look and see the condition of the open space we set aside through the subdivision process. Um, what this open space commission in the, the last subdivision we approved. Sarah, you were here for the one on Deerfoot, not Deerfoot, Chestnut Hill Road. Yep. They wanted to give us that narrow strip again and we just said, no, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't provide the wildlife habitat benefit. People can't really use it. So, and it right. creates an obligation that's very difficult to monitor, manage, and, you know, it Im impacts people's private property as well without real benefit. So, right. you know, we started calling it scrappy crap or crappy scraps, but it's, <laughs> it's just, you know, it's like a way to, com to comply, to comply with the without, requirement yeah. without giving us anything and creating future problems problems for, us. for not only us but the you know the property owners right it so, doesn't really end up benefiting anyone no especially as usually it's the 20 foot no touch to a wetland right which is protected to no build anyhow under our zoning code so right. i don't know any, when i get the list it's not really our thing but they like our involvement which is wonderful yeah you know, the collaboration with the planning board has been really great. Um, annual town meeting is the next thing. Um, we already went over the budget and put the budget in. I haven't heard back yet. Um, we do workshops with it. We do training and, you know, going through uh, seminars and workshops and the winter so we have some equipment that comes out of it we can pay for the planet palooza singer but i'm thinking um for next year you know we really need to start honing in on some of the master plan um, obligations okay so warrant articles, um, I think the only one is going to be about the St. Mark's Park. And I don't know why I put this on there, but um, I'm not sure if there's anything else. I already talked about not doing ours and we'll probably want to weigh in on the St. Mark's Park Road. Um, if, you know, we can visit that next meeting. So chair report, this, oh, oh, I do have some chair report. I was gonna say, unfortunately, this meeting's been sort of like a, my chair report. 
I'm really looking forward to it being more interactive, you guys. So, you know, it's going to take a little while to get up to speed, I think. But um, I was, I was uh, contacted by uh, David Perry, who has a citizen's petition for a zoning change on Route 9. And he's indicated it would be an open space connection um, benefit. And we, this commission has worked on that area in the past. Um, it's off Woodland Road. And there's some properties that could connect to the SVT's property, the town forest, the Breakneck Hill but not through this particular parcel he's talking about changing the zoning. And I, you know, I can't see any um, way that changing zoning is going to increase open space because it's not an open space zoning. However, because it's a zoning change, it will have to go in front of the planning board. And I replied that I would, we could, the open space commission could follow it along through the planning board hearings. And if it turned out to have something for open space, okay, but I wasn't going to put it on the agenda at this time because, you know, there just wasn't an open space component to it. So that might be on the warrant. And if that changes through the hearing, you know, the planning board hearings, maybe it will come back to us, but I wanted to let you know it was out there. And the other one is um, the Rotary Club has a service day, May 20th, and they want to partner with us on our pollinator activities so um and they participated last year they had dr jagir give a talk for them at saint mark's school i gave a talk for them um so they want to be and they've been good partners so we're thinking of having coming up with a day of service at one of our pollinator places to have them bring in volunteers and help out and um maybe it's going i'm not sure which of the three locations the library is kind of my least favorite, although the most visible. The um, Beals Preserve has some potential in Breakneck Hill. Um, so it could be planting, it could be weeding, could be identifying butterflies and bees. We can talk about what it will be, but we needed a title. So, um, Let me see something. I was I said we weren't necessarily going to have Acacia, are you there? Can somebody let her speak if she's there? Acacia, can you unmute yourself? Maybe she's not even here. I am. Hi Acacia. Can you can you say I, I forgot what I told you we would we could call it? Just a minute, please. I oh, would... so to introduce her, Akasi is with the uh, the Rotary Club of Southboro, and she was last year's is it a president, and now she's like the district vice guru. What chief bottle washer? What you need to unmute Acacia. She said one minute. Oh, I am a district assistant governor now. Uh, helping the towns of Marlboro and Hudson, helping the district of number 7910 of Trotter International. And we are very much interested on the project. It's going to be on May 20, day of service. And it's going to include all the districts uh, in the Northeast and um, a lot of states will be involved. Um, I would like this to be something that, that we can show to the district and the international community because part of Canada project is group. And so it's going to be a very large event. And we would like to have something very nice. And I really enjoy um, working with um, uh, your commission and 
uh, Freddy and, and Dr. Birger, you guys have been just so amazing. And uh, the club really appreciated um, the presentations that you had last year. It was the highlight of at least my presidency. Um, and I would like to continue that collaboration. And we are here to, to help you. What can we do to help you? That we can bring our uh, interact club, there is a, a club for students of middle school, trotier school. And we are organizing that group so we will have access to very young students that can come and work all of our members and also also friends from other towns that can come and help us and that's what this day of service for the district is all about it's may 20. let us know what you need help with and we will be there to work with you for you well thank you acacia and i met with her for coffee before the the meeting today and um, it sounds exciting. You know, we, we provide the framework and they bring the labor is what it, you know. And did you say we're gonna be broadcast in Times Square? Oh yes, the Rotary Club of um, Fifth Avenue, somewhere, you know, the rich part of New York. They are going to have all their wealthy people to volunteer and they are going to fundraise for having the whole Day of service and videos. We we they want our titles so that then we submit the video and they will have the videos of all the districts, all the Rotary clubs and all the partners uh, of what we will be doing that day. And they will be showing it in Times Square right there on the you know it's, it's going to cost money, but but that's the most wealthy of all the Rotary clubs in the district. I mean that's. Manhattan. And so they are going to lead that effort. But the whole issue is they are asking us to A, send us a title. What's the project? Um, Freddie suggested one about a day of service to help uh, preservation of what was the title? I forgot now. I have it written down, but I left the note in my car. I think it was. Uh day of service for pollination preservation yeah, yeah and that leaves it open so that we can fine tune exactly which property and which task dependent on what age group you have that makes the difference as well okay. of these the um you said it's at trottier that the students might be coming from yeah the students uh, we just um, are completing all the the, the arrangement with uh, Trotter Middle School to have the quote interact um, club for the students, very young students that we are going to train them on leadership on on Rotary uh, activities and stuff, and, and we are looking forward to working with them and their parents. So they will be an excellent source of, you know, to to help you and whatever you tell us, what we need to do. Just, Tell us what to do and we'll be there, we'll bring the people and we'll do it. So thank you, Acacia. We we always appreciate collaborating with other groups in town and we're working with the youth would be wonderful as well as, you know, we can tick off some of our um, master plan, uh, I don't wanna call them requirements, but goals, you know, cause it has education as part of what we're doing. And, you know. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate your um, high praise for the work we're doing. We've appreciated your the Rotary Club's support as well. So they helped out um, and some ro people from Rotary and other clubs came and helped out when we were doing the Beals Preserve um, heavy lifting of wheelbarrows full of uh, mulch. We had Boy Scouts and you know, that was another collaborative project, but um, Acacia put it out to the Rotary Club regionally and we had people from other towns show up to help out. So more labor is always good labor. Okay, we 
we are going to be there for you if you help us and um, just tell us um, when, where, um, what you will be teaching us and I can inform the group and, and whenever you are ready, we can inform the district, the title of the day of service. So for the commission, um, the issues here are we have projects that need the work, so that's not an issue. It's which one um, would be best suited for, and I can have Acacia give a little more info on the, uh, the volunteers, but also do a little uh, research on which garden area is going to need what, when. So one thing is um, that we'll be ready on May 20th to do the work. And then we have to, all of our projects are in collaborations with other groups. So we'd have to check in with them to make sure it fits their timeline. So the library or the South Broken Land Foundation or the stewardship committee for Breakneck Hill. So there's a little bit of a process, but I think as long as she has the name, that's good to go. And then hopefully we'll have another meeting and can finalize it before um, she needs a, a absolute. Is that all right? Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Um, I think that's Thank the end you. of my my uh, chair report. Uh, let me just see one thing. I think I'm gonna have to cut out though. Okay, that was it. I was just gonna say there was Marcy Jones. I see her in the audience. Um, I didn't have public comment on this. So, um, but if there was anything outstanding she wanted to raise her hand, I'd let her. But I don't see a hand raised. I think that can happen. Okay, so we're now. Um, thank you for staying so long, Leslie. Um, she had a new baby, grandbaby, tonight. And wasn't sure she could make it. So congratulations on that. And thank you, Sarah. I know it was hard tonight with school vacation week. So it's always um, great to get the commission together. Um, is there a motion? I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 8.21 p.m. Is there a second? I second. Okay, I'm gonna go around. Um, Sarah? Um, in favor or not? Sarah Rossitano in favor. CJ? CJ Shelley in favor. Leslie? Leslie Nadich in favor. Freddie Gillespie in favor. That's a wrap. And um, thank you all for um, participating. And we'll send out a meeting list soon. And I'll send out Dr. DeGear's um, info and anything else I was supposed to send out. Okay. Thank you. Thanks Good night. Thanks a lot, Freddie. Thanks, everyone.